Funding for Common Core State Standards and ELLs is provided by the American Federation of Teachers Innovation Fund. All right, so there's five words that we're looking at today, guys. The first one that we're looking at is prisoner. Each day that my students enter the classroom, they have, uh, you know, three to five vocabulary right. words on the board. Next one, this one's a hard one, too. Courtesy. Okay, so you got it. Courtesy. Let's try that one again. Courtesy. Courtesy. You got it, okay? If I do something nice for someone else, so if someone's walking in that door, and I open the door, right, and I say, oh, Go first, right? I'm giving them the courtesy. I'm allowing them to go first. So I'm doing something nice for them. And for okay. Motto keeps her Question ELL's up. first exposure yep. to new vocabulary right, so relatively brief. Now. She will have the okay. students continue to work with these new Next words in a meaningful one, way you so that they can Grim. be more easily Grim. assimilated into awesome. the students' vocabulary. Okay, so before I, I don't just want them to have exposure to the words. I actually want for them to use the words, in part because I want them to have some sort of ownership with that. Right. Miss Motto, what does this one. mean? Which one? This one? Yeah, no, look, I do my number of last year. You could say that. You could say that last year, right? You last year when it was yeah. my enemy. You got it. So last year, Wendy was, for Wendy, Wendy was my, my whatever it was. enemy. You got it. And you just fixed it. So instead of saying enemy, I'm going to take that out and I'm going to say she was my mortal foe. I feel bad. I found that at the beginning of this year and at the beginning of last year when I was exposing them to the vocabulary, it was very easy for them to have this recall with the word, but then not be able to produce a sentence using that word. A lot of it comes from this fear of sounding uneducated and this fear of sounding like they didn't know what they were doing or they couldn't speak English or that they weren't intelligent. But my students have a tendency to go back to what they're comfortable with. So instead of using that tier two vocabulary or the academic vocabulary, they really were falling back to the tier one words or talking around. So an occasion is an event that's something that's like important to you. And Angie already put it in there. She used the word important event, which isn't here, but it's implied. Because it's not just saying, oh, I went to a party, I went to a movie, I went to whatever. I went to a wedding, I went to like a sweet 16, I went to a quinceanera. So it's, it's right there. And I like that. Perfect. Okay, your ocasión, same thing. Mm -hmm. So cognate, you got it. That was really good. That was the best one I've seen all day. By so having them write mom. sentences and by yeah, having exactly. them write short answers exactly. and using those words, I know that they know the word and they know how to use it and they know what it means, and then having them yeah. feel more comfortable with it. So it's a comfort thing and a knowledge thing, too. Ms. Formato so chose today's five word. words based on what the students are about to read. A letter from John Smith about right, Pocahontas and her family. This key vocabulary will help the students understand the text, and it also gives them more opportunities to interact with the new words. Okay, yesterday, John Smith was saying that they, he had three loves, right? Does anybody remember what they were? Oh, I know. Oh, my God, my country, and my, my queen. You got it. My God, my country, and my king. And he put them in order, right? Yes. Because he didn't believe that his king was above who? Who was the top for him? God. No. God. God was number one, okay? And the last one was who? Country. country. His country, okay? So he started off, he talked to the queen. Today we're going to read the second paragraph, okay? So he already started that. I'm going to read this out loud to you, and then we're going to do a little bit of work on it. He said, he started off, we already read the, the first paragraph. In the second one he says, so it is that some 10 years ago, being in Virginia, okay, so he's writing this letter and he's looking back 10 years. So now he's in 16, 16, he's talking about 1606 when he met Pocahontas, okay? And taken prisoner by the power of Powhatan, their chief king. I received, I got, okay, so he's probably talking about what he got from King Powhatan. I got from this great savage exceeding great courtesy. Okay, so he got, does he sound like he's mad? He got exceeding great courtesy. No. no. What does this mean, exceeding courtesy? Oh, Kevin, what's? It is when somebody's good with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like very good, nice treatment, right? And we're gonna, we can always flip back onto the front. Courtesy is like a nice gesture. So he got a lot of nice gestures from him. What I was doing was eliciting this the vocabulary that was used within the text. So I was constantly asking them, 
to use you know tier tier two and tier three level words, academic vocabulary, so that their learning was constantly reinforced. And um, as we all know, through repeated exposure, that's really and practicing. That's really how that that vocabulary gets from the page into the memory.